Hey guys, so welcome back to the Mindset Junkie podcast. Today I am in the Black Box headquarters in Belfast with the founder and owner, Gregory Bradley. Gregory, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you, Seamus, and very welcome to Black, Black Box headquarters. Yeah, um, what yeah a, it's good to have you. Yeah, fantastic. Greg, um, what I like to do for the, every guest and for the listeners is to kind of take it right back to how things started. Obviously, we're in a massive plant here, fantastic business. It's um, growing and growing and growing. But where did it all start? What was it like as a young Gregory growing up? Where did you grow up? Um, what were the early inspirations? Yeah, um, I'll try and cast back. It was almost 10 years ago, started the company, about nine and a half. Um, originally from sort of outside Coleraine, County Derry. Um, I, yeah, played Gaelic football myself and was into training. I wasn't really very naturally gifted Gaelic footballer, but I knew going to the gym training was going to yeah. help improve. Um, so I... Uh, yeah, was into like Joe DeFranco, all the S&C videos and couldn't really find that equipment. Um, so yeah, just downloaded a couple of pictures of that. Um, my, my idea, my wisdom was to basically try and sell the equipment and then just keep one of each myself because yeah. uh, I couldn't afford it. I just finished university and then a, a mutual friend of ours, own Lacey, rang me and was like, I need this stuff next Sunday. I was like, okay, yeah, I think we've got quite a lot of orders, but should be able to do it. Didn't really have any orders, um, <laughs> but went to a welder and was like, can you make this um, these sleds and prowlers? And he was like, have you got engineering drawings? I was like, what's an engineering drawing? I had no idea. What, I was like, yeah, I've got photos. Can you do it? He was like, I'll try. And he, he did. Went down, met Owen, and uh, it was a modified strongman um, yeah. course and yeah. he liked the kit and then he was expanded into Portugal and kind of said to him look I think I might want to give this a go and kind of guess the rest is history if you like um, that's that's kind of how it all, as it all started from there yeah was that something that like growing up in school was it I was like what was the idea in school what were you studying what was the the goal of mine there? Uh, I think school, I was, yeah, a complete failure. I uh, actually left when I was 16 or 15. Um, and then I, I did actually end up going to university. I kind of took a year out and was going to go traveling. And then uh, I actually went to tech, I think, and studied media. And then went uh, to university, studied communication, advertising, marketing. Uh, didn't know, I only went there because I just wanted to drink with my friends for a few <laughs> days per week. Um, didn't really have a master plan, but I, I did know that I probably wasn't going to work for anyone yeah. else. I didn't apply for any jobs throughout university. I sold, I uh, used to buy and sell Abercrombie and Fitch clothing, just buy it in bulk and sell on eBay. And uh, yeah, again, it was just to feel <laughs> an active, overactive nightlife so uh, or social life so um yeah but then after university was thinking about doing something the healthy food space but then gym equipment kind of idea popped into my head and mm. uh yeah just big into sport and kind of so you've always had a background in sport you said it was gaelic was that was that an interest in terms of taking that further or was it just a, like it was a hobby something you enjoyed uh yeah our club Gaelic Club also got a grant probably a couple of years before for a gym and the company that put the equipment in I feel they didn't add a lot of value so I yeah. think that planted the initial Seeds, seed as yeah. well and I thought god there has to be something better out there mm. um, and there wasn't so it was like um, for me that's kind of ingrained that into our own mantra of like not taking advantage of customers or clients it's mm. like you want to add as much value as possible and build long-term relationships and at that stage i feel the gym equipment industry it was all about selling as much as you can yeah. and hitting your quotas um and then we kind of just flipped that and was like maybe try sell less build trust relationships yeah. and uh yeah owns obviously still a uh, a client of ours yeah. and we've had lots of long-term clients and that's what we want to try and continue. Fantastic. So when that kind of started that initial inspiration, um, like they obviously start off the, the whole business in terms of what it is right now, 
I think when we met it was was it EFP at the start at the very start? Yeah. Or what, or what was the initial thing at the very start and how yeah. that actually got off the ground? Right. I, think you, I think you actually phoned me selling protein shakes at one stage. Right, yeah. So I met a guy. So initially it was equipment, but then I'm always a big fan of just trying to success leaves clues, try and find people who have been successful in different areas of life and get yeah. advice from them. Met a guy, Fergus Conley. He's like a, a mad scientist or kind of high performance coach he mm. was working with Liverpool uh, Wales Rugby you name it he kind of questioned the logic of gym equipment how much you would sell he suggested going down the route of uh, yeah sports supplements yeah. and it wasn't really it was going a little bit against my own gut feeling but I thought who am I to question this guy's yeah. you know highly knowledgeable so we started that but it was a very tough market you know huge MOQs minimum order quantities at the start holding lots of stock and then you're getting it back on small orders so we quickly yeah probably tried that for a year got a little bit of traction but you're competing against maxi muscle my protein some of these massive brands um so pivoted away from that and yeah whey protein was the currency <laughs> that we uh paid some of our first employees you've met some of them yeah. miles and michael the one of the welders yeah. uh that was kind of the currency we were using because we had a free tub of protein yeah <laughs> that was how we paid their wages at the start but uh funny uh, side note but the first product we designed our kind of rigs and racks i paid a technology teacher two tubs of protein for him to design that and uh i get away with that now no uh, I still believe in <laughs> bartering and uh, doing contra deals. Yeah, look, yeah. I think resourcefulness is a massively important trait in business, and you need to be able to work. You know, turn lemons into lemonade. Um, 100%. So, so if you look back at that, even Gregory, obviously, like there's specific traits that people have and and kind of need to grow a business to this size from like such humble beginnings. Like if you look at that, do you think that that was something that you had ingrained? Do you think it was just innate? Or do you think that you began to develop those things by learning from other people? Uh, yeah, it's probably hard to put my finger exactly. I do feel that, yeah, I do feel you need to be quite stupid sometimes <laughs> because if you think how many businesses fail, like whatever, 96% yeah. they say in the first 10 years. But for me, I think growing up, a lot of my friends were quite, wealthy and you know we were from a i wouldn't say we were from a poor background but mm. we weren't like you know hugely wealthy so yeah. for me i think subconsciously it's probably like That's yeah right maybe, there, like, uh, yeah, yeah i would like this a lot yeah. of them had cleaners and stuff and i was like yeah that this kind of could get used to this um so for me it was my mom and dad are very empowering they were always just yeah encouraging me to do whatever i want they didn't try and push me down the route of becoming a doctor lawyer etc um mm. so yeah i'm definitely grateful that they were just mm. letting me do whatever i i want and i think the, the one of the most important uh, traits is probably yeah, grit or perseverance you know you need to be highly resilient because mm. yeah running a business is not very easy and i think that as you well know there's lots of myths about you know yeah people think oh, you get to be your own boss work as much or as little as you want yeah. um that's not always the case Definitely. but equally it is highly rewarding um and it is worth it so yeah an emotional roller coaster and being able to control your own emotions is a hugely important one For sure um, yeah so when you, when you go back to that then, Greg, when you're starting out the EFP and it's starting to, it was EFP at the begin with or Sorry, was there a the, name before that? The first name was Elite Fitness and Performance and yeah, it? I studied communication, advertising, marketing yeah. and well, didn't do much studying but you think I would be able to come up with a good name but that was the first one and then it was too long so then we uh, thought it would be a good idea to abbreviate to EFP Gyms mm. and that was probably even a step backwards so a worse name and then I think it was in 2015 or 16 rebranded to Black Box um, which I think yeah, look, the name couldn't get any worse, but um, I was very nervous putting up the first post announcing yeah. that. But yeah, where did the inspiration come for Black Box? How did that come about? Oh, uh, that was a stressful, probably nine month process, yeah. um, trying to come up with a name. Uh, we had actually um, uh, employed a agent, a creative agency to try and do it, and they couldn't come up with a name that we liked, and then actually came out of 
established coffee shop in Hill Street, highly caffeinated, and drove past. There's a music venue called the Black Box, and right. uh, I thought, yeah, quite like that name. And then I texted it to Miles, and Miles always likes to be a little bit contrarian to some of my ideas. And then he said, "What about?" abbreviating it and in fairness he came up with the the logo and yeah. stuff so right. I'll, I'll give him some some credit for old. that so yeah. um yeah and that's kind of the rest is history brilliant. i guess brilliant when you look back at that kind of at the start what was the like what was the kind of struggles that you experienced as a a young entrepreneur a young businessman kind of trying to find your way and trying to like get everything off the ground what was the biggest thing did you like looking back wish you had it maybe new at that time or could have implemented at that time what was the what was the bigger things that you had to overcome uh, yeah look I, you know I was I think maybe about 23 when started the business very little uh, experience um, even maths I initially I think I failed maths at GCSE and yeah. I did eventually pass it but probably wasn't my strongest area um, and I do feel yeah you need to have a decent financial a decent level of financial intelligence but mm. look I think for what I lacked with experience you know just pure determination I had a pretty bad accident playing Gaelic football and essentially nearly died and that gave me quite a lot of perspective fractured my neck and skull and spent um, I think three or four months in hospital so I was already quite driven before that yeah. but you know when I was sitting in hospital and I was in Musgrave which is a area where lots of people have brain trauma and mm. you know are paralyzed for life and I remember just thinking yeah fuck I'm pretty lucky to get through this so after that it was like yeah extremely driven yeah. um but I think to answer your original question I think um yeah, look, we talk about being a perpetual work in progress in Black Box. We all just want to be 1% better every day. I think having a growth mindset is hugely important. You need to be able constantly learning, having that motivation. Um, but look, we've made a, quite a lot of mistakes along the way yeah. and probably will continue. But I think it's just having the resilience mm -hmm. and bounce back ability um, to respond when you get things wrong and hold your hands up. Um, but yeah, starting out, cash flow was a massive issue. It still is, a, you know, the business has been bootstrapped. Uh, at the start, I was, yeah, in my student overdraft, getting charged five pound a day mm. um, for being in the overdraft. And when you have that behind you, you're kind of, you very quickly, and I believe money does, to borrow a phrase, suffocates creativity. You know, mm. if someone gave me a million pound, <laughs> You'd be probably wasteful whereas yeah. if you don't have much money yeah. every penny's a prisoner and you have to make things work so i'm a huge fan of bootstrapping businesses yeah. i think it can be a competitive advantage it goes um, back again to what we were talking about before uh, i mentioned the martini with the values thing where a lot of times the voids that we experience or the voids that we perceive we have or the values in that we we um bring on board and if you feel that money is uh, avoided at that time then that's going to be something that you're obviously um, keeping top of mind and being conscious of and working towards to create. Yeah, yeah, no, totally agree. And yeah, De Martini, we've obviously read a few of his books yeah. and done some of his courses and they are, you know, there's t loads of tech homes from that. Yeah. And for me, you know, reading books or going to courses is, you know, great Apartment. investments because um, yeah. you can learn from experience, but mm. I just don't think you're going to... Um, yeah, learn quick enough. So, yeah. yeah, I think a few school kids getting a tour of the headquarters, I think. Uh, <laughs> so when you go back to that again, like obviously when um, Elite started and it's EFP and then you rebrand the black box, like was the vision this in terms of where it is and, and even further is, or has that just kind of grown and expanded as you've kind of grown and expanded like over time? Or have you always had that vision that I want to create this like global company, I want to create what we've created right now? What was the initial inspiration? Uh, yes and no, I guess. Look, we always did want to be, even if I look back to 2015 or 16, we always wanted to be that sort of one-stop shop for anyone that's into training. Um, mm. We try and use the term training as opposed to working out. You know, we want to try and train with purpose. Um, and, you know, we're not about gimmicks. We've got quite strong core values. And look, I do believe in any sort of exercise is beneficial. I don't think we should debate, you know, whether 
this type this of methodology is yeah. better or, yeah. or not. I think leave that to other people. But um, ultimately, you know, we are our own customer and we won't sell something that we don't believe in. Or, you know, look, there's way easier ways to make money than doing what we're doing you've seen the headquarters we have you've seen the amount of staff we employ and for me i always believe creation transparency is important i think you know i I think manufacturing is hugely important the past 18 months with the pandemics demonstrated that where a lot of countries are not able to manufacture products to survive and there's mm. huge supply chain issues so and look i'm not from i'm not an engineer or from manufacturing we've had to learn this um, and yeah. but it allows us to a lot of control over what we produce um and gives us a bit of an advantage because we can customize and we can produce products quicker yeah. um so i didn't probably imagine we would have yeah as many it's, people or um we just kind of take it each day, um, and, and and personally, like for for yourself, obviously growing that business, there's such a, a a large number right now. Um, is there things that you do, Gregory, in terms of like we all talk about routines and mindset routines and keeping ourselves conditioned? And obviously, you're a, a big proponent of health and fitness. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you do in your own daily routine that kind of keeps you sharp, to keep you on top of things? Yeah, I actually slightly changed my uh, routine as of this morning, where I. Thankfully moved to a new house. I was living in a tiny apartment for the past seven years with no garden. So moved to a house with a garden and I've got a a small sauna. So um, I've started going to the sauna in the morning. Um, But look, I think probably a couple of pillars what I do. Definitely some sort of movement, whether it's yoga, cycling or some sort of weights. Mm. Um, Then breathing, either meditation um Wim Hof just mix it up yeah. a little bit um and yeah as much as I hate them a bit of cold therapy <laughs> ice baths or or um yeah seen you were away there a few weeks ago where was that Fermanagh somewhere was it yeah that? uh that's right um it was with one of Wim Hof's guys and yeah. uh yeah, the ice is, uh, I do believe it's kind of, you know, if you can conquer that first thing in the morning, anything else you yeah. sort of come across the, next, the rest of the day is pretty easy, so it, it def- is. It definitely puts manners in you. Yeah. For sure. We, we went on a retreat there, it was myself and a friend of mine, and we held a retreat in Fermanagh, and he's a Wim Hof coach as well too, Arm Dean you call him, and um, we had, I think we had 100 kilo of, of ice, mm-hmm. and there was a big enough group there, but the girls went on first, and they sat for 20 minutes, and the ice just sitting and we're like, right, we have to try and go on here after this. Yeah. <laughs> and you talk about then like trying to step out of it. I think I got 12 minutes, 12 or 13 minutes. The gear sat in there for 20 minutes solid. Hey? Yeah. Unbelievable. Like. Yeah, it is all to do with the, the breath as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's impressive. I don't think I could do 20 minutes. Uh, it sure was impressive. And then the, the pressure was on. Then they try and get in and try and match it. But I think I got 13 minutes. And But as you said, like if you can overcome that, you can condition your mind, your body, using your breath and bringing that under balance. Yeah. And setting you up for the day massively, like 100%. Yeah. So yeah, I think those sort of three pillars, reading as well, I think can be energizing or podcasts, you know, mm. feed, feed your brain. Um, yeah. But I'm a massive fan of routines, you know, they say routine sets you free. And, um, you know, I, I always just try to get up early, get a good head start to the day. And um, yes, I think it's, I uh, can't remember who said it, but yeah, like, success 80 percent success just showing up and i think that is part of the reason is Mm. that i've just worked quite hard for a sustained period of time and if i didn't do that you know none of this would be possible um and obviously you know getting good people involved touched on you know financial intelligence isn't my strongest area so it's being aware of where you're not strong and getting other people you know you want to try and be the stupidest person in the room and yeah this company's the best idea wins it's not about any ideas i come up with yeah it's fact, dropping the ego around it like really isn't it yeah, yeah. And, you know the, the best idea wins and i kind of we talk about you know to have a good idea you need to have a lot of bad ideas and yet culture is hugely important Mm. um getting the right people in um who are bought into the company's mission mission and vision Mm. um 
but we don't always get it right. You know, yeah. the world of recruitment is a, a challenge and what they say, 2021 yeah. is the year of the great resignation yeah. and there's lots of choice out there. It's an employee's market. Yeah. So when you, were, when you were starting out, Greg, was there, um, like, was there early mentors or coaches that you kind of went to? And, and what was a, like, if you were to look back, what was the best piece of advice that you've kind of taken on board in terms of running your own business or even at a personal level? Yeah, I think there there is books, obviously, is one, you know. Yeah. Um, like Tony Robbins I quite like. I know not everyone does. He's yeah. not everyone's cup of tea, but look, he's done a, a good job. Some of the stuff I'm not a fan of, but yeah. it's like anything, just take the best from it and mm. disregard uh, the rest. Um, probably the, one of the best quotes I did here is one from a guy, Charlie Tremendous Jones, and it's basically in five to ten years you'll be the same person apart from two things one the books you read and two the people you spend most of your time with and look i hear all these motivational quotes and stuff but <laughs> equally that is one that is hugely impactful yeah. it's simple but like the people you spend most of your time with is hugely sure. important yeah. and i've had to make a few choices over the years of spending less time with certain people yeah. um because yeah they just our values probably aren't totally aligned or you know it's not going to help me to to the get goal. where i want yeah. to be um, well, using the same thing as uh, james clear i think it was in his book Environment is the invisible hand that shapes human behavior. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, crucial. Yeah, James Clare's book, Atomic Habits, yeah. great, great book as well. Yeah. Um, I think it is massively important. You know, there's so many variations of that quote, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it is true. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think that that's one. Books is another one. In terms of mentors, Thomas Plummer probably, helped at the, the start yeah. haven't seen him in quite some time yeah. but um, yeah, I just think being curious is a, a very important trait you know be more interested than interesting and mm. I just like asking questions and hearing people's stories and yeah. trying to improve. learn and adapt from, from everybody yeah. yeah yeah, I think so uh, and even like, like for yourself what I notice and obviously like seeing like the growth that you've had through the years do you feel that one of your qualities and attributes is is that like networking and being able to get it on around different people and um, learning from those people and is that something again that you've had to kind of develop or did you see that as like right I need to actually develop this trait as, as part of my business or did it just come naturally for you to actually connect with all these different people and and grow. Yeah, I, I believe it or not, I am an introvert, and people think I'm extroverted. Yeah. But um, yeah, look, I think when you have common interests, and you know, um, like a lot of the, my network I'd have met at courses, and I was there learning out of a passion myself. Yeah. You know, I wasn't just there to make a make up a number. Yeah, or <laughs> even just to network. And I don't like that term, yeah. but I think. Um, yeah, as the company grows and as it gets bigger, it is a challenge, you know, to keep in touch with people and spend as much time with them. Mm. But it is something I'm trying to do as much yeah. as I can. But I think when you try and force it, you know, it's not authentic and people can see right through it. Um, but relationships is one of the most important things in, in business. And I think, you know, we can get obsessed with, you know, Google ads or Facebook ads and different click through rates yeah, and all yeah. this here and but equally if you don't have good relationships, you know, you're not gonna go yeah. anywhere. It's back to basics, didn't it, really? Yeah. Customer service, good relationships, all of those things. Yeah. Hundred percent. Um again looking back then, so what do you think was the the best piece of advice that you've had? Uh well that Charlie Tremendous Jones quote would, would be one of them. Um I'm trying to think what other good bits of advice I've got. Uh, again, I think Tony Robbins talks about success leaves clues, yeah. you know, like you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Mm. Um, I think it's just find someone who's achieved something similar to what you want mm. and try and learn from them. Yeah. Um, what else? Other good bits of advice. So what's the worst piece of advice you've had? Oh, oh, there's lots of that going <laughs> about. Um, worst bit of advice. 
God, I don't know. That might might yeah, come to me. Question, but isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I don't know, but I do think it's you know surrounding yourself with the the there's right. No, there's no such thing. I suppose people say there's no such thing as a, a bad piece of advice or or failure because you learn from everything, really, don't you? Take it on board and progress again. Yeah, that's it. And look, you know, if anyone that is starting in business, you know, you are gonna have lots of people trying to give you advice and you yeah. have to be able to quickly filter out if it is good or bad and I think like I said having that mindset of just being able to keep going mm. resilience um, bouncing back and showing up when it, it is hard and you are going to make lots of mistakes yeah. um, but I think if you can have that mindset of treating failure as feedback mm. um, it's, it's hugely important Um and see where you're at now then, Greg. Like, give us a wee bit of a rundown then in terms of where the company's headed, what are the goals, and, and where are you supplying? You're literally supplying like, globally at the minute. You're supplying to a lot of football teams, etc. Yeah. Yeah, so currently we have just shy of about 100 uh, team members. Um, so, yeah, we've grown that uh, probably quite rapidly over the past few years. I've been a mixture of manufacturing about... 25, 30, uh, welders, laser cutting, powder coating, which mm. you would have seen, uh, distribution, uh, sales market, and etc. Um, and then, yeah, we're obviously our main markets would be UK, Ireland, but we've just finished a couple of big projects in Saudi Arabia, um, America. I think we're doing some stuff with Pure Gym. They're starting to break into new markets, yeah. um, Australia, um, and just finished Nike's headquarters in, in London. Um, so, yeah, I think, I know we, you know, we have quite a good list of blue chip clients, yeah. but I always feel like a bit of a, a fraud talking about them because the business was built on dealing with, yeah. you know, small business owners like yourself, Seamus. Yeah. Um, also, rugby teams, Gaelic clubs, etc. Mm -hmm. And that is what the business was, was built water. built on. And yeah. we want to continue that as well. Um, mm -hmm. But it's probably the most exciting thing about the business is that we get to work in, you know, elite sport, um, corporate gyms, a lot of professional athletes, lots of the Arsenal players yeah. um, and, and other athletes. And that's cool. But um, I think that even during the pandemic, it was rewarding to be able to, you know, in a lockdown, getting mm. people dumbbells, kettlebells, bands, etc. Because, you know, for people's mental health, you know, health and wellness or fitness is hugely important. 100%. Yeah. What did you learn most about yourself throughout lockdown? And what did you learn most about business in lockdown? Did it change? Well, obviously it changed, but what was the uh, biggest things uh, you took away? Yeah, look, to be honest, before the pandemic, we were predominantly a I don't like using the term B2B, but we were business to business for simplicity. Um, you know, e-commerce was probably 15% of our, our revenue. Mm. That then pivoted to the complete opposite where it was all e-commerce and all of our big contracts. We had a big one in Australia, cancelled. Pure Gym, obviously a big customer of ours. So there was zero spend, a lot of Premier League football teams. Um, but it was... Uh, a, a challenge in one I think transparency is hugely important in March you know we pulled the team together and just was honest mm. um, transparent with them show a bit of vulnerability and just said look guys we don't know what the outcome of this is going to be we may have to shut down again we're a bootstrap business we don't have millions of pounds in the bank Yeah, there was a probability we could go out of business obviously that didn't happen mm. we were busy we had to work you know we were running 24 hour shifts five days a week um and i think the big thing is just being authentic and you know i was packing orders in the warehouse helping yeah. out any way i can and that's one thing in business i'll never ask anyone to do something that i haven't done myself yeah uh, i'll be down here helping out you mm. know because yeah i just think people not going to buy into that you know if i'm just sitting in just a swanning off somewhere in a holiday yeah, yeah. A fancy office and stuff yeah. you know and i think look i've got many flaws but i think that's one thing people probably they probably have respect for me because yeah. they know that you know i'm working extremely hard at this and yeah. uh no connection there like really isn't there as a business owner and like a, a business a leader of a company let's say yeah. we have that connection with people at a at a an ordinary level instead of 
Yeah, hundred percent. And look, we've got essentially we want to try and have like almost a hundred many business owners in here. Mm-hmm. You know, we're very transparent, open book management. Uh, there's no real kind of layers of bureaucracy. Um, that's something that I just believe in this transparency. We even had one of our guys who works in the sh- um, manufacturing workshop was in on Saturday, yeah. working eight hours without voluntarily because he just wanted to improve the place yeah. and like I told him he didn't have to do it but yeah. he just is bought into this and um, and that's about like again you go back to culture and that's something that, that you've built obviously because people want to be part of that brand and part of that culture and yeah. that's, that's not easy to do either Greg it's not easy and it's not an easy thing to build no it's not and look we have a profit share um, within the business you know because yeah. we want people to you know the better they work, you know, the yeah. more they can get, you know. Um, and I, I do believe in that, you know, the days of the old way of, you know, business of creating shareholder value and maximizing shareholder value, that has changed. And I do believe it's probably the most challenging time to run a business because mm. you can look, There's, let's be honest, there's a lot of wokeness going on and there's lots of various different things, you know, yeah. businesses, you're in the micro, you're constantly um yeah in the attention of people and do one thing wrong and you know it could ruin a brand yeah but again that's the the thing i suppose even from a personal level it keeps you inspired and keeps you focused and keeps you in like on the straight and narrow as you said like there's a lot of stuff that's going on globally around the world that's affecting people psychologically and um, physiologically everything that's going on but i think when you have that mission and a purpose and you have something that's like for you like something that you're inspired by that gives you again that um, ability to put the blankers on and stay focused on what's really important and keep the noise out. Yeah, that's it. You know, one of our core values is don't be a dickhead, which we borrow <laughs> from. Uh, sorry for the language, but the All Blacks. Um, yeah. And the, it is something that, you know, we, that, that works internally. You know, we just mm. have a no dickhead policy. Yeah. Um, another one's client obsession, you know, because we want. You know, they are for us the most important thing without our clients or customers. Mm. Um, and we have a distinct difference between customer and client because the customer generally is like a one off transaction and we view client as a long term yeah. um, yeah. relationship. So, yeah. um, but it, it is hugely important um, to have that. Fantastic. So, lessons then, Greg, if you were to impart some lessons for anybody that's kind of starting out in the same um, industry as yourself, um, creating that business. If you were to look back at some of the things that maybe you could have known at the start or implemented, what would you, what advice would you give to any young entrepreneur who's kind of starting out in business right now? Uh, look, there's very different ways, many ways to skin a cat, and you know, there's people successful in business that haven't read a book ever in their life, yeah, you know, yeah. but I would just assume you're not that person <laughs> because, you know... It's a small percent. Yeah, it is yeah. a small percent, and I just feel reading books going to the right courses, investing in yourself. I think you need to view things as an investment as opposed to a cost as well. Yeah. I don't talk really about staff. Uh, it's more of team members, you know. Yeah. Um, and it spend, We pretty much have an unlimited CPD budget within the company where you want to do any course, go to buy any books, etc. Because again, we don't want people that are just staying the same. Yeah. Um, we want people that are getting better all the time. Mm. So I think having that growth mindset is, is hugely important. Yeah. Um, and do you see that even within your staff, Greg? Like, do you see that from a personal development standpoint where you're trying to get them to educate themselves in that area or is it on their own skill sets of, in terms of what they're doing? Different, and look, let's be honest, you know, we don't, ex- some of the welders do read books and listen to podcasts and yeah. stuff, you know, we're not expecting everyone to do it, yeah. but we very much encourage it. And, sure. you know, we're a fast growing company where you want to be kind of getting better because you don't want to be getting left behind. You yeah. know, there's quite a bit of public accountability within the company. Um, so we encourage it. Um, not everyone does it, but there's other ways we can let them go visit other businesses or learn internally. You know, mm. loads of people have a huge amount of knowledge within the, the business and yeah. want to share it. Um, so I think that's an important one. Um what other lessons? Um, 
we've touched on the kind of the, the five people it definitely is a, a, a hugely important one I think a big one too is, is being able to ask I think like most like a lot of entrepreneurs business owners they're maybe afraid they actually ask for advice or ask for help and I think you have as you said it like earlier on like you have to be sometimes willing to be the stupidest person in the room and just always have that open mind to be able to learn and educate and learn from different people I, I find that in business a, a lot of times people are so close and they're afraid to ask for help yeah sure a bit of vulnerability you know yeah. um ask for help definitely uh, you know i don't ever pretend to have all the answers and i think you know it is pretty simple it's just work hard and yeah. you know be good to people you know you just want to be treated the same mm -hmm. way you would expect yourself um yeah. there is no silver bullet there's no magic sauce here yeah. um but it's a, it's a small things, isn't it? It's the, it's the like I think it was a book, Jeff Olson, The Slight Age. He yeah. says success is the daily compounding, mundane shit that you need to do every single day that compounds into what we think is success. It is, but the problem is with social media and the age we're in now is people want instant gratification, you yeah. know, and that's probably going to lead to more businesses fail because people are just going to give up quicker because they're not willing to put in the work and I don't want to turn into this kind of promoting work workaholism yeah. but unfortunately if you're not willing to do 70, 80, 90 some weeks even 100 hours per week yeah. you're just probably not going to get hit that sort of um, tipping point that you need in, in business yeah. um, and then in time once you've kind of got a bit of traction in the market obviously you can work less but um, yeah, it takes a tremendous amount of inertia at the start to, to get going. Right. And that's right. I think social media at the minute kind of portrays success or um, the trap of success as something that's instant and easy. Um, yeah. And people don't realize the work and the determination and um, the persistence that's needed to actually grow any type of business. Yeah, I, I had someone email me a couple of days ago saying, oh, congrats on your recent success. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of just like, yeah, I've been here nearly 10 years, <laughs> kind of. So, um, and look, yeah. I don't view us as a massive success. I kind of borrow Jeff Bezos talks about day one, you know, we're always just kind of day one, constantly trying to improve. Yeah. And when you start to believe your own hype, uh, I think there's a saying, it's actually one, if you come back to the good advice bit, uh, I think it's um, th things are never as good or as bad as you think they are. So it's like, yeah. you know, if things are going well, still stay level headed. Mm. If they're going really bad, again, be level headed. Yeah. And um, I think that is important, you know. Yeah. I read a fair bit of stoicism and different stuff, and I think it is important in business. Yeah. You touched on Jeff Bezos. Is the is the rumor true? You fitted out a gym from in the house. <laughs> <laughs> haven't haven't done him. Um, wouldn't mind. We have done quite a lot of high net worth people, yeah. um, but haven't done him. I, I do look. I've got huge admiration what he has done, but yeah, he has also made life harder for a lot of <laughs> us in business. The Amazon effect. People want yeah. stuff in one That's or two the, days, mm. and. Um, so it is impressive what they've done, but probably from a small business owner point of view, it's it's not great. Yeah, um, for sure, for sure. Last question then, Greg, we touched on uh, like books, et cetera, and I know you're an avid reader as well too. What are your top three books? Ooh. Uh, I like, well, probably books that probably had the most impact on me. Um, Magic of Thinking Big. Um, Schwartz? Yeah. yeah. Good book, yeah. which I read probably back at the start. Yeah. Um, Shoe Dog, I like Phil McKnight from Nike, um, right. his story. And it's a slow burner. I actually was going to st nearly stop reading it because it wasn't great at the start. Yeah. But then just some of the stories that, you know, how many times Nike nearly went out of business and mm. couldn't make payroll and stuff. And I love reading about that because then it makes you feel marginally better when you're yeah. having those issues um so she dog i think is a, a good one and uh third book um team martini's book i think is a, a good one again going back yeah. to any of them either 
um, breakthrough experience or values inc yeah. i think the other one and i think you know his view of and similar to that things are never as good or as bad yeah. you know it's just having that sort it of shows the perceptions is then it keeping yeah. things balanced yeah yeah i think yeah. that's hugely important um so I think any other books oh one last one hard thing about hard things a guy ben horowitz and that's again just about controlling your own psychology because yeah. you know one day you could be on top of the world and next day you're yeah you're in the pot <laughs> yeah and it's it is just being able and he writes about lots of stuff that most people don't so yeah. they're probably the the top three um what are your top three ah uh, the magic of thinking big is actually one of my favorites as well too yeah. um the breakthrough experience is definitely another um again going back to the old classic is a, a good book think and grow rich i love that book yeah um there's a small book with James Allen. Um, That's how a man think of. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a really good wee Red, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, again, what else? Top three. Uh, I'd actually have to sit and think about that. I put you in the spot, and you put me in the spot. <laughs> yeah, but it probably it probably sounds similar. I love the magic of thinking big with Schwartz. Um, thinking Grow Rich is always a classic, well, yeah. and the breakthrough experience. I like the values factor as well too. To be fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the slight age. The one I just mentioned with Jeff Olson. It's a really good book. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, there's there's loads out there. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You a book coming out soon? Or? I have a book out. I actually got out. it out in Audible this week. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Crash the Success. Anybody hasn't picked it up yet, you, know, you can get it in Audible. There's the plug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I got it in Audible this week. It took a lot longer than I actually thought to get it out in Audible, but it's out now, so yeah, happy days. Good. It's the first done. Maybe get another one started, but a lot more work on it than I actually thought, to be fair. Yeah, oh, yeah, well done. You're probably one of the minority people to get one out. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. What about yourself? One uh, de definitely not. Not, <laughs> not in the next 30 years anyway, maybe a, a later stage. Yeah. But um, no, I think I prefer learning from others for now and then yeah. maybe at a later stage. Write one out. Yeah. yeah. It's a good book. I just actually, they, they finish um, The Surrender Experiment. Have you read yes, that? I've read it. I haven't yeah. finished it yet. Fantastic. But, uh, yeah, yeah, really good book. Yeah. thanks for the tip yeah Greg thank you very much man for taking the time out and jumping on the podcast yeah no thank you for coming to Black Box and um, yeah thanks for having me look forward to doing another one soon yeah excellent Greg cheers man <laughs>